Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and this is Carl. He's gotten so big, look at him. So big. And don't you worry, Joe is right over there because they both know that I am on the couch and I'm in my comfy PJs because on this Real Life Friday, we're talking about movies I grew up with. Yay! Now, if you missed the last movies I grew up with, happened about, I don't know, a little over a month ago, maybe two months ago, I talked about why Girls Just Wanna Have Fun was the second greatest movie of all time. And you guys really seem to enjoy that video. And a lot of the comments were, you know, don't forget about Pretty in Pink or 16 Candles or Breakfast Club. Yes, all very iconic movies, all movies that I've seen a million times and could probably quote. <gasps> but I think we all know that those are some pretty iconic movies. I don't need to rehash them. You already know they're great. So instead of talking about that specific genre of movies from the 80s, which I know we all love, I would like to talk about movies that maybe you haven't seen, maybe they're not in a genre that you particularly like. Editor John, for example, never in his life before meeting me would he have sat down and watched a dance movie or a Fast and the Furious movie. But now, since I've opened his eyes to how great those type of movies are, because they are just what they are. And if you can accept the movies for just what they are and not get too highbrow about them, they're actually very good movies. So I probably will never talk about the staple movies from the 80s. Oh, I do love Pretty in Pink. I think Pretty in Pink out of all those is the most underrated, but Breakfast Club, I probably won't be talking about them on this series because I want to open your guys' eyes to some movies that you've never seen before or may never have seen before. Now, the movie we're gonna talk about right now, I'm sure you saw in the title, and maybe you're thinking, Sherry, you just gave me this whole speech on wanting to open my eyes to movies I've never seen before, but yeah, this movie's pretty popular and I think we've all seen it. But when's the last time you have seen it? Because I will tell you what, Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion still holds true today. It is still just as good today as it was the day it came out. And I feel like any generation can watch this movie today and still find that the moral of this movie still holds true. And I'm gonna prove it to you today. So if you haven't seen Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion, seriously, where have you been? All I've had to eat for the past six days are gummy bears, jelly beans, and candy corns. God, I wish I had your discipline. And if you have, but it's been a while, I think you're still gonna enjoy this video. So before we get going on it, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We are getting up there in subscriptions. Now, I know I'd mentioned this lofty goal of like 15,000 subs before the end of March, and it was lofty. In all honesty, I wasn't thinking we were gonna make the goal, but I wanted to put it out there in the universe because what if? And I will tell you this, we have made great strides in our subscriber count. So I wanna thank all of you who have subscribed to the channel recently and who are commenting and who are really loving the videos that I push out. But to those of you who are not yet subscribed, what are you even thinking? It's free. So put a pause on this video right now. If you are not currently subscribed to the channel, hit the little subscribe button and then unpause this video and we'll get going. Okay, so little background, Romy and Michelle's high school reunion came out in 1997. I was already seven years out of high school. What was I doing in 1997? Got married in 94, had Davis in 99. 97, I was dancing for the Niners, already had a couple jobs. I was a full grown adult and I love Romeo and Michelle's high school reunion. Uh, Mira Sorvino and Lisa Kudrow. Oh, Janine Garofalo is in it and she is amazing. Love her. Didn't you have a thing for Sandy in high school? <laughs> I did not have a thing. I did not have a thing. I did not have a thing. 
10 years after their high school graduation, Romy and Michelle haven't exactly accomplished everything that they set out to do. When they hear of their upcoming high school reunion, they take it as an opportunity to show their classmates how much they have changed. First by trying to reform themselves, then by creating a lie that eventually spins out of control. Now, I was telling editor John that I wanted to talk about Romy and Michelle, and he was like, that is such a silly movie. He's right. It is a very silly movie. The circumstances that these girls get themselves into, very silly. However, I think we can all relate to, no matter what time period in your life you are in, when ever, and you can't tell me otherwise, whenever you get that invitation to a high school reunion, I mean, the very first one at 10 years, I'm telling you what, it's like, okay, oh my gosh, okay, so um, I seriously have to diet right now, start exercising, I think like my hair looks good enough, and I think my job's okay, and just had a kid last year, how am I gonna get this body weight off, maybe I need to go get Spanx, and every subsequent invitation to a reunion for your high school, those same things go through your mind. And I don't know what it is and why we feel like we need to put the pressure on ourselves to impress people that we went to high school with. I don't know why we do that to ourselves, but we do. And Romy and Michelle is the perfect movie that sums up the way we can make ourselves just go crazy about impressing people. When in reality, if we were just our real true selves, I'm sure people would be even more impressed with us. But we don't think like that when we're going through it. So you can't fault Romy and Michelle for not thinking that when they were going through it. This is their very first reunion after graduating high school and I get it. So, Romy and Michelle grew up in Tucson and they weren't the most popular girls. You know, even though I had to wear that stupid back brace and you were kind of fat, we were still totally cutting edge. I love it when it's hamburger day. Uh-huh. They're looking through their yearbook and they were going through the like, oh, here's the A group. Really like the leaders of the A group are Christy Masters and Lisa Luter. And then Christy Masters is dating the most popular boy in school and his name is Billy Christensen. Now, Romy has a huge crush on Billy Christensen. Hey. Hi, Billy. Hey. But he's dating Christy Masters. She's like so transparent. And then they're like, well, okay, so we weren't in the A group. B group was like the drama, the choir, those sorts of kids. And they're like, okay, well, we weren't in the A group and we weren't in the B group. Oh, we were not in the C group. We were definitely not in that group. Hail to the no. So like Janine Garofalo, she was in the C group. Oh, Toby, fuck off. And um, Sandy Frank, he was in the C group. Now Sandy Frank has a huge crush on Michelle, but she doesn't like Sandy Frank. Okay, well, if we weren't in the A group, when we weren't in the B group, and we weren't in the C group, well, what group were they in? And they decided, well, maybe they weren't in any group. They were just kind of loners. So that kind of sets the tone for their like placement in the high school hierarchy of things. Yeah, they got bullied. The A group really teased them and picked on them. Like in one scene, Christy Masters, total bully, kind of a bitch if you ask me. She came over to them while eating lunch. Christy Masters is coming over here. Wow, she never comes over. Okay, just act cool. Pretending like she was being nice to them and asking them if they were gonna try out for the school play. And as she's talking to them, she's putting magnets on Michelle's back, on her back brace. And then when she leaves, they're like, oh, she's so sweet, da 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 da. Well, then Sandy Frank comes over to Michelle and he's like, Michelle, I just have to tell you. Christy Master stuck magnets on your back. And she freaks out. She's like, oh my God. It's kind of a funny scene, but that just tells you, yeah, Romy and Michelle, not the most popular kids in high school. What I love about their relationship is that they were the best of friends. They always looked out for each other. I mean, in that situation with the magnets, Michelle was completely devastated and mortified. And Romy was like, don't let them see you get upset. And so she stands up and she just starts laughing. And Michelle's like, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm pretending you just did something hilarious. Now you laugh at me, come on, do it. <laughs> 
they just start laughing, laughing, and they wanted to show the A girls that whatever they did didn't bother them. And so they got up walking away laughing. And then another instance, it was at the prom, and Romy finally got up the courage to ask Billy Christensen for a dance. And he told her yes, but to wait right there. And then he went over and told his girlfriend, Christy Masters. That Romy girl just asked me to dance with her. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, that's pathetic. <laughs> so Christy went over, laid out this whole story about how Billy came up to her and told her that Romy asked him to dance and now that he knows that Romy likes him. He doesn't want to pretend with Christy anymore. And that my life was perfect and you ruined it. <laughs> and then what ends up happening is Christy and Billy just drive away and leave Romy there waiting for Billy to come and dance with her. And so she's super upset and Michelle just looks at her and says, I'll dance with you, Romy. And so they go out onto the dance floor at prom and they just dance together. And I'm getting choked up thinking about it because their friendship is so great. And so when they graduated high school, they said, we're getting the hell out of this shithole Tucson town and we're moving to LA and we're gonna make our dreams happen. So when they get the invite to the 10 year reunion, they are living together in LA. They're, they're just living their life. They're living their best life. They're having fun. They're doing what they want. They are broke and it doesn't matter. Romy has a job at like, I'm gonna guess like a, where you go buy cars? A car lot? And then Michelle doesn't have a job at all. She is not employed. But they've always had a sense of fashion and they've been making their own clothes since high school. Michelle always does all the sewing, but they come up with the designs together. This is like the cutest we've ever looked. Oh, it's definitely the cutest. Don't you love how we can just say that to each other and we know that we're not being conceited? Oh, I know. No, we're just being honest. <sighs> they go out to the club every night. They make up dance routines. They just have all the fun they can be having in their young adult lives. And I kind of envy them of that. Like I went from graduating in high school, living with my mom, to getting engaged, to moving out, to getting married, to having a kid. And I kind of missed that like, just being with your girls and don't get me wrong, I've been to many a club, but you know, I just kind of missed that part. I went into responsibility like right away. And I love that Romy and Michelle are just like, we're living our dream, we're living our best life. We may be totally broke, but we are having so much fun just being together. And so when they find out about the reunion, it's actually Janine Garofalo, Heather Mooney, that tells Romy, going to the reunion? What reunion? Our 10 year high school reunion in Tucson. They haven't seen each other since they graduated high school. Heather Mooney is very successful now. She is the inventor of the quick burning paper on, I wanna say, is that Lady Fair? Ever hear of Lady Fair cigarettes? The ones that burn down real fast? Twice the taste and half the time for the gal on the go? Her backstory is she was in the C group because she was very, very smart, but she was also kind of like goth and misunderstood. So every time between classes, she would walk out around to the back of the school and smoke, but she never had enough time to smoke a full cigarette. And so one day she was like, they should make a cigarette that you could smoke all the way through between classes. And so now she's like super rich. So. Romy asks her if she's gonna go to the reunion and she's like, no. I'd rather put this out in my ass. And then Romy kind of says, I wonder why Michelle didn't tell me. And so she's like, Michelle Weinberger? Mm -hmm. I just thought she'd be married to Sandy Frank. So the backstory is Heather Mooney, crush on Sandy Frank. Sandy Frank, crush on Michelle. So yeah, Heather Mooney says she's not going to the reunion, but Romy and Michelle decide that they are gonna go to the reunion. So when they're filling out their paperwork for the reunion, it asks them questions, you know, like name. Oh, we're having so much fun already. Are you married? What is your occupation? So as they're filling all of this out, Romy's like, huh. Maybe we aren't as like fabulous as I thought we were. And so they get super bummed out that they're not gonna be able to impress 
all of the people that they went to high school with because their big grand plan was all of these people are still stuck in Tucson while they're living it up in LA. But as they're answering this questionnaire, they're kind of realizing maybe they aren't living it up in LA. Well, do you think it's impressive that we're still single and we've been living together for 10 years and I'm a cashier and you're unemployed? Well, not super impressive. They have no boyfriends and they're totally broke. None of that looks good on paper. None of that is impressive. But as bummed out as they are, they still want to go to the reunion. So there's this one scene where they're like super bummed, you know, they're eating their feelings basically. And Michelle's going through a magazine and she's like, God, the top female executives are all so pretty. And Romy's like, it's because they are models, Michelle. And she's like, wow, look at them. They really do look like top female executives. And Romy says, well, it's just because of their outfits and they're holding briefcases and whatever. So then they're like, Oh my God, Michelle, that's it. We can go to the reunion and just pretend to be successful. We don't actually have to be successful. We can just look like we're successful. No one's gonna know. They live in Tucson, we live in LA. If we just show up looking like business women, then they'll think we're business women. Oh my God. So they hatch this scheme where Michelle is gonna make them all the clothes and then Romy is going to get them a nice car, which will help sell the story of them being very successful businesswomen in LA. Because Romy works at a car lot, she works this, <laughs> she works this deal with a Ramon. Mm, Romy, you are looking hot today. And Ramon got a deal on an old Jaguar that he's fixing it up. And so Romy is like, hey, can I borrow your car? And he's like, what do I get out of it? And she's like, well, what do you want? He's like, oh, Romy, you know what I want. Because Ramon has a crush on Romy. And she's like, seriously, just forget it. I'm not gonna have sex with you so that I can borrow your car. I gotta get something. So they work out this funny, funny, funny deal where they pretend to have sex in Ramon's office. Like, oh, Ramon noises so that the coworkers can hear. Oh, Ramon, oh, oh, oh yes, oh. And then think that Romy's having sex with Ramon when she's really not. She ends up scoring the Jaguar. It's a convertible. Michelle makes all their cute clothes. So they are ready to go. They are gonna go to the reunion. They're driving to Tucson. Michelle has spent all day making a tape of nostalgic music so that they can, you know, sing all of the songs that they went to high school with on their trip to Tucson. Let's do it. Now I gotta cut loose, cut loose. I have no idea what the rest of the lyrics are. Either. So, they're driving to Tucson and they're having the best time. They stop at like a diner or whatever to change into their business women attire. They come out of the bathroom of the diner and they go up to the counter to order. Romy's like, do you happen to have any business women specials? <laughs> the lady's like, come again? Well, we're business women. Yeah, from LA. You know, we just thought you might have a business women special. We're on our way to a business meeting in Tucson. And the lady's like, well, what kind of business you in? And they both just look at each other with these blank looks because they didn't think that far ahead. They just thought they could show up to the reunion saying they were successful businesswomen and no one was gonna bother to ask them what it is that they actually did. So they get back in the car and they're driving and they're like, I can't believe we never thought of what to say we did for a living. And Romy's like, it should be something really cool. She's like, what if we invented something? And it should be something that everybody knows about but nobody really knows who invented it. Oh my, I know, I know what it is. Post-its. Post-its. Everybody knows what post-its are. Yeah, they're the little yellow things with the stick them on the back, right? We invented post-its. And Michelle's like, that's a good one. So they come up with this story about how they went about inventing 
post-its. Michelle is kind of not liking this story because it sounds like Romy is actually the one that invented the post-its and Michelle is the designer who thought of making them yellow. So this turns into a big fight. I just think that you're more believable as a designer rather than as an inventor. You know? Uh -huh. They pull over on the side of the road, they get out of the car. There's discussions about how Michelle only acts like she's dumb to make Romy feel better because Michelle's the cuter one. You are not cuter, Michelle. I am so cuter. It's like common knowledge, Romy. Everybody thinks so. I'm the Mary and you're the Rhoda. Romy is like, I'm the Mary. So there's this big fight. Romy says, this whole time they've been together. I carry you, Michelle. Without me, you'd be lost. <gasps> that is such a lie. Oh yeah, well let's just see. Let's split up and see what happens. What do you mean, split up? As soon as they get to Tucson, they're going their separate ways. Fine, fine. They get in the car, they don't say another word, and they drive to Tucson. I forgot. <laughs> There's this one part that is kind of my favorite part. When they're hatching their plan of like how they're gonna appear successful, like Michelle was just gonna find a better job, Romy was gonna find them successful boyfriends. So they split up their tasks and while Michelle's out looking for a job. I am like really familiar with the entire Versace line and if you would just give me a chance, I know I could like sell the shit out of this stuff. <laughs> Romy is like hitting the clubs to find boyfriends for them. And so she, <laughs> one guy comes up to her, she's like, Oh, that's a very nice suit. Is it Armani? And he's like, yes, it is. So she's super excited because he must be wealthy if he's wearing an Armani suit. And she's like, oh, well, what do you do for a living? And he's like, I'm a suit salesman. So she goes, can you excuse me? I cut my foot earlier and now my shoe is filling up with blood. And then she limps away. And I just thought, ay, ay, ay. We've all been at a club where someone comes up to us and either wants to buy us a drink or asks us to dance and we don't really necessarily want to. I would have loved to have used the, I cut my foot earlier and now my shoe's filling up with blood excuse. I love that line. It's like one of the best. This movie has tons of really good lines like oh my gosh Romy says that they should lose weight and Michelle was literally holding a bag of chips and she had one chip and she took a bite just one bite and Romy's like oh okay I think that like one chip makes a difference. It wasn't even a whole chip. And then the line where they've been working out forever and Romy goes to weigh herself and she's like God I've been killing myself for eight days and I gained a pound. And Michelle goes, well, did you deduct 16 pounds for your shoes? Oh, so many good lines in this movie. So they've had their fight. They're driving to Tucson in silence. Well, now we go into this dream sequence. It's Michelle who is having the dream. They pull up to the reunion in Tucson and Romy walks out ahead of Michelle and Michelle, you know, goes in and Romy instantly finds Billy Christensen. They're talking, they're hitting it off. Michelle goes up to the A group and tells the A group. Um, I invented post-its. <laughs> You're kidding. They're like, oh really? Can you give us the exact account of how you invented post-its? Michelle rattles off this whole thing about how she actually invented the glue. You can raise the viscosity by adding a complex glucose derivative during the emulsification process. The viscosity and all of this stuff. So she's super pleased with herself. The A group is believing that she invented post-its and so, oh, she wants to go find Romy because she wants to tell Romy about the exciting news about how she told the A group that she invented post-its and they totally believed her. So she goes outside and at this point, Romy is sitting in the Jaguar with Billy Christensen and they're about ready to kiss. Michelle interrupts them and Romy's like, Michelle, can't you see that I am busy? Fine, okay, just forget it. So Michelle goes to walk away and she gets hit by this limousine. And it's the most ridiculous like hit you've ever seen. She flies up, she rolls all the way down the roof of the limousine and plops on the ground. Not the driver of the limousine, but the passenger of the limousine gets out and helps her up and says, please come 
I have boxes of Kleenex in my limo. So she goes in the limo. Lo and behold, it is Sandy Frank. Now, he has become so rich that he was able to have plastic surgery and Michelle tells him, Okay, I'm not just saying this, but you really picked a good one. <laughs> Thanks. They start making out in the limo. A girl comes over to the limo and says, Come on, you guys, they're about ready to announce the vote. And Michelle's like, what vote? I didn't know there was a vote. And she can't find her top. So she's just in her bra and her skirt. So she goes out, everybody's around. They're getting ready to announce the winner of the vote. Billy Christensen is actually announcing the winner and he's like, it's a tie. We have a tie. The most changed since high school. Our Romy wife and Michelle Weinberger. So they both go up, everybody's cheering. Michelle's like, I'm sorry, I couldn't find my top. And then you see Sandy Frank kind of pulling Michelle off stage and Billy Christensen pulling Romy off stage and they're going their separate ways. And then they get into their respective cars and they drive away. And then it's 70 years later and Michelle's really, really old and she's married to Sandy Frank and they're both really, really old. And Michelle is looking at her medal from the 10 year reunion and Sandy's like, tell me, have you been unhappy all of these years? And she says, oh no, Sandy, it's just been, <laughs> sorry, it's funny. I've just been lonely with no one to talk to. Because her and Romy have parted ways. So she gets on this like futuristic video phone call thing and Romy is on her deathbed. Romy's son, Billy Christensen Jr. has answered the video call. She's like, Billy, honey, go tell your mommy that it's Michelle Weinberger Frank on the phone. And then it flashes to Romy in her deathbed saying, I'm not gonna talk to her until she admits that I'm the Mary and you're the Rhoda. And then Michelle's like, I'm the Mary. And she's hitting the like, end the call button, but it's a horn honking. And that's how Michelle wakes up from her dream, only to find herself in the parking lot of the reunion. Romy just left Michelle asleep in the car and went into the reunion. I mean, the friendship is pretty much over at this point. Michelle gets out of the car and she goes into the reunion and she sees that Romy is talking with the A group. Romy is really trying to put on airs about how successful she is. And she tells the A group, I invented post-its. And they don't believe her. And she's like, nope, I invented post-its. Hmm, okay. Well, then Michelle looks and she sees Heather Mooney, Janine Garofalo, come walking into the reunion. And she's like, oh, this should be good. Heather Mooney beelines it over to Romy because at this point, that's the only person Heather Mooney really knows is gonna be at the reunion. Hello, Romy. Uh, Romy's like, oh, oh, I think I saw Sandy Frank. She's trying to get Heather Mooney away from the A group. And the A group is like, oh, we were just talking about success stories. What is it that you do? Ever hear Lady Fair Cigarettes? I invented the quick burning paper. Wow. They have a whole class full of inventors. Meaning? And so Romy cuts them off and she's like, oh, apparently Sandy Frank invented this really cool rubber and now super rich. Then the A group goes, oh, and Romy said, she invented post-its. So Heather Mooney looks at Romy and is like, Who did not? Yeah, I did. You did not? Yeah, I, well, who did then? A guy named Art Fry from the 3M Corp. We started in business school. And so the A group look at Romy and they're like, you just lied. You just made that whole story up. And they totally start laughing at Romy. Romy, totally upset, goes, walks away. Michelle ends up following her. Romy's crying and Michelle's like, so what? So we made up a story. It's not that big of a deal. Who cares? Well, you know what? There are worse things than telling some dumb story and having everybody laugh at you. What? what? <sighs> like losing your best friend? Let's just go back out there and have fun. And they go back out right at the time they're making announcements. So Christy Masters gets up on stage. I'm Christy, Christy Masters, Masters Christensen. Christensen. 
welcoming everybody to the reunion and she's saying you know our very own lisa luter is a fashion executive or something for vogue magazine and this person over here has been playing football for the cowboys for five years and romy and michelle claimed they invented post-its <laughs> And the entire reunion starts laughing. So, of course, Romy and Michelle go into the bathroom. Romy's crying. She's really, really upset. And Michelle sits down next to her. She's like, you know, I never knew that we weren't that great in high school. Like, we always had the best time. And until you told me that we didn't, I just thought we were just living our best lives. I thought everything since high school was a blast. Can't we just... Go out there and be ourselves. The hell with everyone else. I don't think I can. And Michelle goes, well, do you think you can stop being a baby? So basically, Michelle gives Romy the speech that changes her attitude and they're gonna go out to the car, they're gonna change into their own style of clothes and they're gonna come back into the reunion and everybody's gonna see how amazing they are. They've got on their dresses that Michelle has made and they come walking into the reunion, strutting their stuff like crazy. They walk right up to the A group and Romy says to Christy, Why are you always such a nasty bitch? Her speech to Christy is a speech that I wish every kid that has gotten bullied by someone could say. So Michelle and I did make up some lame story. We only did it because we wanted you to treat us like human beings. But you know what I finally realized? I don't care if you like us, because we don't like you. Because the end of her speech is just so perfect. She says something to the effect of, You're a bad person with an ugly heart, and, and we, we don't, don't give, give a, a flying, flying fuck, fuck what, you, what think. you think. And it is just perfect because the entire A group is gone. And yeah. So they start to walk out. Well, as they're walking out, Christy has to pipe up and say, well, we still think your outfits are ridiculous. Well, then Lisa Luter steps forward and says, actually, because you know, she's like a fashion executive at Vogue. They've got nice lines, a fun, frisky use of color. All in all, I'd have to say they're really not bad. And so everybody in the reunion is looking at the A group a little differently now. So as Romy and Michelle are walking out, the one girl comes running in and she's like, oh my God, everybody, Sandy Frank just pulled up on a helicopter. So they all run out and Sandy Frank comes walking up to Michelle because you know, he's had a crush on her forever and he asks her to dance and she says, only if Romy can dance with us. Sure. So then comes the best dance number that you will ever see in your entire life. And it's to Cindy Lauper's Time After Time. Lying in my bed, I hear the clock ticking. Thing I knew, not a bad confusion. It's nothing new, but that, but I. So they do this amazing dance number and they decide now is the time to go. It's not going to get any better than this. So as they're walking out, Heather Mooney stops them and she's like, I am sorry that I blew your big life for you. This whole time I thought, you know, you with your long hair and you with your long legs, walking around flinging your hair on your long legs, you know, this whole time you were making my life a living hell. I had no idea that the A group was making your life a living hell. So that was kind of a cute moment where Heather Mooney kind of befriends Romy and Michelle, two sets of people that you would never think would be friends. So that was very cute. So they're walking out and Sandy Frank is going to uh, fly them home on their helicopter, which never really made much sense to me because I was like, well, wait, Romy borrowed Ramon's Jaguar and it's in Tucson. If they fly home on Sandy Frank's helicopter, how the hell is Ramon's car gonna get back to LA? 
it's just like a hole. It's a it's a hole in the story and it's never resolved. I don't know to this day where Ramon's Jaguar is. Is it still in Tucson or did like Sandy Frank have it shipped back to LA because he's like worth a million dollars? I have no idea. I don't know where Ramon's car is. All I know is that everybody came out of the reunion to watch Romy and Michelle fly away in Sandy Frank's helicopter. And then cut to, I think like six months later, they're back in LA and they actually have their own store and it's called Romy and Michelle. Uh, Sandy Frank loaned them the money to open this fabulous store. Heather Mooney is shopping there. They're just, once again, living their best lives. It is the greatest, happiest, best, all around movie ever. And it just shows like, don't sweat this. Why do we care so much what people think? Why? Why do we do that to ourselves? If we just be ourselves and we're just living our best, most fun life, we'll attract the people that want to be friends with us and the people that we want to be friends with. Who gives a shit about the A group and the Christine Masters of them all? Those people are shit. And to be quite honest, Christy Masters was not an anchor woman like she set out to be. She was a weather girl. And Billy Christensen, even though they were married, they had a horrible, horrible marriage. They were on the verge of divorce. Billy Christensen was like laying drywall for Christy Masters' dad. She made up stories that he was a real estate developer. So nobody's life is as great as it appears on like the Facebooks and the Instagrams of it all. Even the stories they tell you to their face. Their lives aren't that perfect. Nobody's lives are that perfect. And I think the moral of Romy and Michelle is, is just be yourself. The people that get you will get you. And those are the people that you should surround yourself with. Fuck everybody else, those fake ass bitches, and just do you. I mean, again, it doesn't get much better than that. So there you have it, and there it is. Another movie that I grew up with. And if you haven't seen it in a while, you should go watch it because it's super great. There are super funny moments, even more moments than I told you about. It's just an all around feel good movie. And if you have seen Romeo and Michelle recently, what do you think? Did you like it? Are you feeling the same way I'm feeling? Like we all get nutted up over the stupidest things and really if we just let go, everything just turns out. It just all works out. As long as you are living your best life and you're not hurting anybody, who the hell cares what anybody else thinks? If you agree with me, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't seen Romy and Michelle, now that I've told you about it, and now that I've told you how great it is, are you gonna watch it? I think it's free on Amazon Prime right now because I watched it last night and it was free on Amazon Prime. So if you have Amazon Prime, you could queue it up right now and sit down and watch it and see exactly how great it is. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you haven't done so already, which you better have because I told you about it in the beginning of this video. But if you forgot and you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out. Let's fold scarves. Okay. You know what, Michelle? I think you were like the funnest person I know. Me too. With you. Uh.